Chapter Three of Twenty Five Sermons on the Holy Land. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, BC. Twenty Five Sermons on the Holy Land by Thomas DeWitt Tamage. A Mediterranean voyage and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land acts twenty seven forty four having visited your historical city brindisi which we desire to see because it was the terminus of the most famous road of the ages the roman appian way and for its mighty fortress overshadowing a city which even hannibal's hosts could not thunder down we must to-morrow morning leave your harbour and after touching at athens and corinth voyage about the mediterranean to alexandria egypt i have been reading this morning in my new testament of a mediterranean voyage in an alexandrian ship it was this very month of november the vessel was lying in a port not very far from here on board that vessel were two distinguished passengers one jophius the historian as we have strong reasons to believe the other a convict one paul by name who was going to prison for upsetting things or as they termed it turning the world upside down this convict had gained the confidence of the captain indeed i think that paul knew almost as much about the sea as did the captain he had been shipwrecked three times already he had dwelt much of his life amidst capstans and yard arms and cables and storms and he knew what he was talking about seeing the equity storm was coming and perhaps noticing something unseaworthy in the vessel he advised the captain to stay in the harbor but i hear the captain and the first mate talking together they say we cannot afford to take the advice of this landsman and he a minister he may be able to preach very well but i don't believe he knows a manline spike from a luff tackle all aboard cast off shift the helm for headway who fears the mediterranean they had gone only a little way out when a whirlwind called a eurocyclodon made the torn sail its turban shook the mast as you would brandish a spear and tossed the hulk into the heavens overboard with the cargo it is all washed with salt water and worthless now and there are no marine insurance companies all hands ahoy and out with the anchors a great sea storm great consternation comes on crew and passengers the sea monsters snort in the foam and the billows clap their hands in glee of destruction in the lull of the storm i hear a chain clank it is the chain of the great apostle as he walks the deck or holds fast to the rigging amid the lurching of the ship the spray dripping from his long beard as he cries out to the crew now i exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship for there stood by me this night the angel of god who i am and whom i serve saying fear not paul thou must be brought before caesar and lo god hath given thee all them that sail with thee fourteen days have passed and there is no abatement of the storm it is midnight standing on the lookout the man peers into the darkness and 
by a flash of lightning sees the long white line of the breakers and knows they must be coming near to some country and fears that in a few moments the vessel will be shivered on the rocks the ship flies like chaff in the tornado they drop the sounding line and by the light of the lantern they see it is twenty fathoms speeding along a little farther they drop the line again and by the light of the lantern they see it is fifteen fathoms two hundred and seventy-six souls within a few feet of awful shipwreck the managers of the vessel pretending they want to look over the side of the ship and undergird it get into the small boat expecting in it to escape but paul sees through the sham and tells them if they go off in the boat it will be the death of them the vessel strikes the planks spring the timbers crack the vessel parts in the thundering surge oh what wild struggling for life here they leap from plank to plank here they go under as if they would never rise but catching hold of a timber come floating on it to the beach here strong swimmers spread their arms through the waves until their chins plough the sand and they rise up and wring out their wet locks on the beach when the roll of the ship is called two hundred and seventy-six people answer to their names and so says the text it comes to pass that they escaped all safe to land some wholesome lessons i learnt from this subject first that those who get us into trouble will not stay to help us out these shipmen got paul out of fair havens into the storm but as soon as the tempest dropped upon them they wanted to go off in the small boat caring nothing for what became of paul and the passengers ah me human nature is the same in all ages they who get us into trouble never stop to help us out they who tempt that young man into a life of dissipation will be the first to laugh at its imbecility and to drop him out of decent society gamblers always make fun of the losses of gamblers they who tempt you into the contest with fists saying i will back you will be the first to run look over all the predicaments of your life and count the names of those who have got you into those predicaments and tell me the name of one who ever helped you out they were glad enough to get you out from fair havens but when with damaged rigging you tried to get into harbor did they hold you a plank or throw you a rope not one satan has got thousands of men into trouble but he never got one out he led them into theft but he would not hide the goods or bail out the defendant the spider shows the fly the way over the gossamer bridge into the cobweb but it never shows the fly the way out of the cobweb over the gossamer bridge i think that there were plenty of fast young men to help the prodigal spend his money but when he had wasted his substance in riotous living they let him go to the swine pastures while they betook themselves to some other newcomer they who took paul out of fair havens will be of no help to him when he gets into the breakers of melida i remark again as a lesson learned from the text that it is dangerous to refuse the counsel of competent advisers paul told them not to go out with that ship they thought he knew nothing about it they said he is only a minister they went and the ship was destroyed 
there are a great many people who now say of ministers they know nothing about the world they cannot talk to us ah my friends it is not necessary to have the asiatic chorea before you can give it medical treatment to others it is not necessary to have your arm broken before you know how to splinter a fracture and we who stand in the pulpit and in the office of a christian teacher know that there are certain styles of belief and certain kinds of behavior that will lead to destruction as certainly as paul knew that if the ship went out of fair havens it would go to destruction rejoice o young man in thy youth and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth but know thou that for all these things god will bring thee into judgment we may not know much but we know that young people refuse the advice of parents they say father is over suspicious and mother is getting old but these parents have been on the sea of life they know where the storms sleep and during their voyage they have seen a thousand battered hulks marking the place where beauty burned and intellect foundered and morality sank they are old sailors having answered many a signal of distress and endured great stress of weather and gone scuttling under bare poles and the old folks know what they are talking about look at that man in his cheek the glow of infernal fires his eye flashes not at once with thought but with low passion his brain is a sewer through which impurity floats and his heart the trough in which lust wallows and drinks men shudder as the leper passes and parents cry wolf wolf yet he once said the lord's prayer at his mother's knee and against that inquietous brow once pressed a pure mother's lip but he refused her counsel he went where eurosidons have their lair he foundered on the sea while all hell echoed at the roar of the wreck lost pacifics lost pacifics the safety of christians another lesson from the subject is that christians are always safe there did not seem to be much chance for paul getting out of that shipwreck did there they had not in those days rockets with which to throw ropes over foundering vessels their lifeboats were of but little worth and yet notwithstanding all the danger my text says that paul escaped safe to land and so it will always be with god's children they may be plunged into darkness and trouble but by the throne of the eternal god i assert it they shall all escape safe to land sometimes there comes a storm of commercial disaster the cables break the masts fall the cargoes are scattered over the sea oh what struggling and leaping on kegs and hogsheads and corn bins and store shelves and yet though they may have it so very hard in commercial circles the good trusting in god all come safe to land wreckers go out on the ocean's beach and find the shattered hulks of vessels and on the streets of our great cities there is many a wreck mainsails slit with banker's pen hulks a beam's end on insurance counters vast credit sinking having suddenly sprung a leak yet all of them who are god's children shall at last through his goodness and mercy escape safe to land the scandinavian warriors used to drink wine out of the skulls of the enemies they had slain 
even so will God help us out of the conquered ills and disasters of life to drink sweetness and strength for our souls you have my friends had illustrations in your own life of how god delivers his people i have had illustrations in my own life of the same truth i was once in what on your mediterranean you call a euro cyclone but what on the atlantic we call a cyclone but the same storm the steamer greece of the national line swung out into the river mercy at liverpool bound for new york we had on board seven hundred crew and passengers we came together strangers italians englishmen irishmen swedes norwegians americans two flags floated from the mass british and american ensigns we had a new vessel or one so thoroughly remodeled that the voyage had around it all the uncertainties of a trial trip the great steamer felt its way cautiously out into the sea the pilot was discharged and committing ourselves to the care of him who holdeth the winds in his fist we were fairly started on our voyage of three thousand miles it was roughly nearly all the way the sea with strong buffeting disputing our path but one night at eleven o'clock after the lights had been put out a cyclone a wind just made to tear ships to pieces caught us in its clutches it came down so suddenly that we had not time to take in the sails or to fasten the hatches you may know that the bottom of the atlantic is strewn with the ghastly work of cyclones oh they are cruel winds they have hot breath as though they came up from infernal furnaces their merriment is the cry of affrighted passengers their play is the foundering of steamers and when a ship goes down they laugh until both continents hear them they go in circles or as i describe them with my hand rolling on rolling on with finger of terror writing on the white sheet of the wave this sentence of doom let all that come within this circle perish brig guillotines go down clippers go down steamships go down and the vessel hearing the terrible voice crouches in the surf and as the waters gurgle through the hatches and portholes it lowers away thousands of feet down farther and farther until at last it strikes the bottom and all is peace for they have landed helmsman's dead at the wheel engineer dead amidst the extinguished furnaces captain dead in the gangway passengers dead in the cabin buried in the great cemetery of dead seamers beside the city of boston the lexington the president the cambria waiting for the archangel's trumpet to split up the decks and wrench open the cabin doors and unfasten the hatches perils not to be made light of i thought that i had seen storms on the sea before but all of them together might have come under one wing of that cyclone we were only eight or nine hundred miles from home and in high expectation of soon seeing our friends for there was no one on board so poor as not to have a friend but it seemed as if we were to be disappointed the most of us expected then and there to die there were none who made light of the peril save two one was an englishman and he was drunk and the other was an american and he was a fool oh what a time it was 
a night to make one's hair turn white we came out of the berths and stood in the gangway and looked into the steerage and sat in the cabin while seated there we heard overhead something like minute guns it was the bursting of the sails we held on by both hands to keep our places those who attempted to cross the floor came back bruised and gashed cups and glasses were dashed to fragments pieces of the table getting loose swung across the saloon it seemed as if the hurricane took that great ship of thousands of tons and stood it on one end and said shall i sink it or let it go this once and then it came down with such force that the billows trampled over it each mounted of a fury we felt that everything depended on the propelling screw if that stopped for an instant we knew the vessel would fall off into the trough of the sea and sink so we prayed that the screw which three times since leaving liverpool had already stopped might not stop now oh how anxiously we listened for the regular thump of the machinery upon which our lives seemed to depend after a while someone said the screw is stopped no its sound had only been overpowered by the uproar of the tempest and we breathed easier again when we heard the regular pulsations of the overtasked machinery going thump 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 at three o'clock in the morning the water covered the ship from prow to stern and the skylights gave way the deluge rushed in and we felt that one or two more waves like that must swamp us for ever as the water rolled back and forward in the cabins and dashed against the wall it sprang halfway up to the ceiling rushing through the skylights as it came in with such terrific roar there went up from the cabin a shriek of horror which i pray god i may never hear again i have dreamed the whole scene over again but god has mercifully kept me from hearing that one cry into it seemed to be compressed the agony of expected shipwreck it seemed to say i shall never get home again my children shall be orphaned and my wife shall be widowed i am launching now into eternity in two minutes i shall meet my god there were about five hundred and fifty passengers in the steerage and as the water rushed in and touched the furnaces and began violently to hiss the poor creatures in the steerage imagined that the boilers were giving way those passengers writhed in the water and in the mud some praying some crying all terrified they made a rush for the deck an officer stood on deck and beat them back with blow after blow it was necessary they would not have stood an instant on the deck oh how they begged to get out of the hold of the ship one woman with a child in her arms rushed up and caught hold of one of the officers and cried do let me out i will help you do let me out i cannot die here some got down and prayed to the virgin mary saying oh blessed mother keep us have mercy on us some stood with white lips and fixed gaze silent in their terror some wrung their hands and cried out o oh god what shall i do what shall i do the time came when the crew could no longer stay on the deck and the cry of the officers was below all hands below our brave sympathetic captain andrews whose praise i shall not cease to speak while i live had been swept by the hurricane from the bridge and had escaped very narrowly with his life 
the cyclone seemed to stand on the deck waving its wing crying this ship is mine i have captured it ha ha i will command it if god will permit i will sink it here and now by a thousand shipwrecks i swear the doom of this vessel there was a lull in the storm but only that it might gain additional fury crash went the lifeboat on one side crash went the lifeboat on the other side the great booms got loose and as with the heft of a thunderbolt pounded the deck and beat the mask the jibboom studding sail boom and square sail boom with their strong arms beating time to the awful march and music of the hurricane meanwhile the ocean became phosphorescent the whole scene looked like fire the water dripping from the rigging there were ropes of fire and there were mass of fire and there was a deck of fire a ship of fire sailing on a sea of fire through a night of fire may i never see anything like it again prayers from all everybody prayed a lad of twelve years of age got down and prayed for his mother if i should give up he said i do not know what would become of mother there were men who i think had not prayed for thirty years who then got down on their knees when a man who has neglected god all his life feels that he has come to his last time it makes a very busy night all of our sins and shortcomings pass through our minds my own life seemed utterly unsatisfactory i could only say here lord take me as i am i cannot mend matters now lord jesus though didst die for the chief of sinners that's me it seems lord as if my work is done and poorly done and upon the infinite mercy i cast myself and in this hour of shipwreck and darkness commit myself and her whom i hold by the hand to thee o lord jesus praying that it may be a short struggle in the water and that at the same instant we may both arrive in glory oh i tell you a man prays straight to the mark when he has a cyclone above him an ocean beneath him an eternity so close to him that he can feel its breath on his cheek the night was long at last we saw the dawn looking through the portholes as in the olden time in the fourth watch of the night jesus came walking on the sea from wave cliff to wave cliff and when he put his foot upon a billow though it may be tossed up with might it goes down he cried to the winds hush they knew his voice the waves knew his foot they died away and in the shining track of his feet i read these letters on scrolls of foam and fire the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of god as the waters cover the sea the ocean calmed the path of the steamer became more and more mild until on the last morning out the sun threw about us a glory such as i never witnessed before god made a pavement of mosaic reaching from horizon to horizon for all the splendors of earth and heaven to walk upon a pavement bright enough for the foot of a seraph bright enough for the wheels of the archangel's chariot as a parent embraces a child and kisses away its grief so over that sea that had been writhing in agony in the tempest the morning threw its arms of beauty and of benediction and the lips of earth and heaven met 
as i came on deck it was very early and we were nearing the shore i saw a few sails against the sky they seemed like the spirits of the night walking the billows i leaned over the taffrail of the vessel and said thy way o god is in the sea and thy path in the great waters it grew lighter the clouds were hung in purple clusters along the sky and as if those purple clusters were pressed into red wine and poured out upon the sea every wave turned into crimson yonder fire cleft stood opposite the fire cleft and here a cloud rent and tinged with light seemed like a palace with flames bursting from the windows the whole scene lighted up until it seemed as if the angels of god were ascending and descending upon stairs of fire and the wave crests changed into jasper and crystal and amethyst as they were flung toward the beach made me think of the crowns of heaven cast before the throne of the great jehovah i leaned over the taffrail again and said with more emotion than before thy way o god is in the sea and thy path in the great waters so i thought will be the going off of the storm and night of the christian's life the darkness will fold its tents and away the golden feet of the rising morn will come skipping upon the mountains and all the wrathful billows of the world's woe break into the splendor of eternal joy and so we came into the harbor the cyclone behind us our friends before us god who is always good all around us and if the roll of the crew and the passengers had been called seven hundred souls would have answered to their names and so it came to pass that we all escaped safe to land and may god grant that when all our sabbaths on earth are ended we may find that through the rich mercy of our lord jesus christ we all have weathered the gale into the harbor of heaven now we glide home at last softly we drift on the bright silver tide home at last glory to god all our dangers are o'er we stand secure on the glorified shore glory to god we will shout evermore home at last home at last end of chapter three recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c